When we talk about organic molecules, they have geometries that really don't match very well to the 2s, px, y, and z. In particular, the px, y, and z are perpendicular, and those angles don't match the geometry that's typical of bonding in organic molecules. And for that reason, we use a different set of atomic orbitals when we talk about molecular orbitals of much more complicated molecules, like we encounter in organic chemistry. Those new atomic orbitals are called hybrid orbitals, and in this webcast, we want to discuss where those hybrid orbitals come from and how they're used. First of all, what is hybridization? It's a new type of atomic orbital. It comes about by mixing those original 2s, px, y, and z. For example, we can make a sp hybrid orbital. An sp hybrid orbital is an LCAO combination that takes place on one atom. Okay, so what happens here? We end up with constructive and a destructive part. One part of that atomic orbital will have a large lobe. One part will have a small lobe. And again, they'll have a, a nodal plane, and not exactly at, but very close to the nucleus, which is uh, located right here. We say that this is a, a new atomic orbital derived from one part P, one part S. Uh, one important point we should note in terms of using this down the road, this really looks an awful lot like a 2PX orbital, and it's going to behave in the way that the 2PX orbital behaved on sheet one. And so for all of the combinations that we uh, put together on sheet one that involve 2PX, well, these hybrid orbitals will uh, pretty much do the same. They could be involved in pi-type side-by-side bonding, or they could be involved in sigma-type bonding. Well, there are actually two ways that we could combine the 2s orbital and a p. We could do it in an additive mode, which would uh, be as illustrated there, that gives rise to the large lobe on the right. Or we could do it in a subtractive mode, where we just invert the sign of the p everywhere. And in that case, the large lobe will be on the left, and the small lobe of opposite sign will be on the right. Those are the two sp orbitals that derived from mixing s and p one part of each. And here on this page, it's just a summary of all of the different mixing combinations for the different uh, hybridized orbitals. One thing I'll draw your attention to, so over here is the sp case. In the sp case, we leave behind, we don't hybridize, two of the p orbitals. They're left over for pi bonding. In the case of sp2 hybridization, we don't hybridize one of the p orbitals. It's left over for pi bonding. In the case of sp3 hybridization, all of the orbitals are involved in hybrid uh, hybridization. The hybrid orbitals have these different spatial arrangements. sp hybrid orbitals are ideal for linear geometry. The uh, sp2 hybridization is uh, ideal for trigonal planar geometry. The uh, sp3 is ideal for tetrahedral geometry. And so that's pretty much what we need to know about the hybrid orbitals. Hybrid or atomic orbitals can be used to construct molecular orbital diagrams. So here's the molecule of acetylene, and in particular, this diagram is all about that bond right there. We're going to take the hydrogen 1s orbital, and we'll combine it with the sp hybrid orbital that's centered on carbon. We're going to combine that in the way that we used on sheet 1 for uh, sigma s p mixing. So again, that hybrid orbital behaves much like the px orbital. We can do that in a bonding mode and an anti-bonding mode, and we're uh, going to make sigma bonds that are bonding and anti-bonding. We could also uh, combine those the sp3 hybrid orbitals that would make this new sigma bond here, and it would be like the px plus px combinations in sheet one, where we would end up with bonding modes as well as anti-bonding modes, and uh, we would have a pair of electrons, one coming from each of those hybrid sp3 uh, atomic orbitals, filling up and making a, a filled sigma bond and an empty anti-bonding. Now, it is important. We're going to use it a lot, that anti-bonding orbital. We're going to use it because it turns out to be an electrophilic site. There's the carbon nuclei located there. And look at where the lobes are located. The lobes are on, out, on the outside of that internuclear bond. The lobes for the empty anti-bonding sigma star are large, but they're outside of the, the bonding space. We can construct pi orbitals. Ethylene consists of both a sigma bond and a pi bond, carbon-carbon uh, pi bond, carbon-carbon sigma bond. We can uh, draw the pi bond as resulting from a combination of the p orbitals. We can draw the sigma bond as the result of sp2, sp2 overlap. 
one part that corresponds to the sigma part that combines the sp2 orbitals that look like px plus px combinations from sheet one, and then the remaining p orbitals on each carbon can come together in a side-by-side -side mode that produces a pi bond and a pi star bond.